they gave me an ultimatum at that point. They said uh, I was still fairly adamant that I wanted to date Mary Jane, and they uh, essentially said you can either live under our roof or you can date Mary Jane. And uh, I chose to move out that next week. If evil, pure evil exists, is it an elegant, seductive aura of darkness or a clumsy, serious parody of good? Theologians argue about this, but I think the real villain is usually half a clown less Hannibal Lecter, more Oswald T. Cobblepot. Welcome to the True Crime Documentary Channel. I'm your host, Adam Baker. And in this video, I'm going to do a review of the crime committed by Christian Longo. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give me a like and leave a comment on what you think of this crime. After all, it's only your support that helps grow the channel. The Longo family looked like a typical middle-class family living in Oregon. Christian Longo married his wife, Mary Jane, at the age of 19. They were married for eight years and had three children, Zachary, Sadie, and Madison. Mary Jane stayed at home while Christian worked at Starbucks. The couple were active Jehovah's Witnesses. Christian seemed like the perfect family man, had boyish good looks, good speech, and a religious upbringing. At first glance, life seemed perfect for the Longo family. However, everything changed in December 2001 when it was discovered that Christian Longo was a cold-blooded killer. The bodies of Mary Jane and his three children were recovered from the icy waters off the Oregon coast. On December 19, the body of four-year-old Zachary Longo washed ashore. Christian had tied a pillowcase filled with rocks to one of his legs. The bodies of 34-year-old Mary Jane and two-year-old Madison Longo were found under the pier of the marina. Christian had stuffed a naked Mary Jane into a suitcase and Madison into another suitcase. Both suitcases were pinned down with dumbbells. Three-year-old Sadie's body was found by police divers. Like her brothers, Sadie had a pillowcase filled with rocks attached to her leg. Police would later say that if Zachary's body hadn't come ashore, it could have been a decade before they found the bodies. According to the autopsy, water was found in Sadie and Zachary's lungs. They died of asphyxiation, and Mary Jane and Madison were strangled. Investigators looking into the Longo family murder case quickly turned to Christian as the prime suspect. But he had already escaped. The FBI placed him on its 10 most wanted list, and he was soon indicted on four counts of aggravated murder and unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. Investigators determined that Christian fled to Cancun, Mexico. He rented a room at the resort using a stolen credit card and assumed the identity of former New York Times writer Michael Finkel. He managed to fool the entire resort community. He spent his time on the beach, getting drunk, going to nightclubs and having an affair with a German tourist. Eventually, Longo was confessed, taken into custody and extradited to the United States. The FBI focused its attention on investigating why this seemingly perfect husband murdered his entire family. The investigation revealed that this was not Longo's first criminal act. Longo had been involved in financial scams for years. He took out loans in other people's names, racked up debts, wrote fake checks and used fake IDs to scare off creditors. He even created a fake business and wrote fake checks to his clients. Christian managed to hide the truth from Mary Jane, who had no idea of the reality of her husband's nefarious actions. The family was struggling financially, and Christian lived extravagantly, buying fancy cars and taking lavish vacations. Christian's carefree lifestyle came crashing down when he was eventually caught and charged with fraud. He was given probation and ordered to make restitution to the victims. His life changed when he cheated on his wife and was discovered. Jehovah's Witnesses found out about his dirty laundry and immediately kicked him out. This caused the family to move from Michigan to Ohio. Once in Ohio, he seemed to want to start a better life, but in reality he was just dodging creditors. 
He continued his criminal activity of cashing forged checks, but eventually attracted the attention of the local police, causing Christian to pack up his family and move again, this time to Oregon. Christian was facing the death penalty. Before the trial even began, he pleaded guilty to the murder of his wife and youngest child. Initially, Christian claimed that his wife killed the two older children because she was angry when she learned the truth about their financial situation. In his anger, he said, he killed Mary Jane and their youngest child. During the trial, prosecutors argued that Christian was tired of his family and killed them to ease his burden. There is also evidence that Longo planned the murders months before the actual event. During the investigation, information from a website was found on his computer that suggested various ways to carry out the murders. Christian isolated Mary Jane from her family and even sent a postcard from Mary Jane to her sister in another state in an attempt to create a false trail. On his way to Oregon, he made sure to throw away personal items, including family photos and children's books. Christian's defense team attempted to defend his actions, arguing that his financial situation broke Christian morally and that he was not actually responsible for the two deaths. They noted that Mary Jane and Madison's bodies were handled differently. The defense also said the two older children drowned and asked the jury to consider why Christian killed two members of his family, but left Zachary and Sadie alive when he threw them into the water. The jury began deliberating to decide whether Christian was guilty of killing his wife and child and whether he deserved to die by lethal injection. In less than four hours, a guilty verdict was reached. The jury returned to the punishment phase and heard testimony to determine whether Longo should be sentenced to death for all four murders. Once again, they quickly deliberated and sentenced Longo to death. Several jurors said that a man with Longo's intelligence and charm would be a threat and they had no choice. Reporter Michael Finkel, whose name Christian Longo used while hiding in Mexico, wrote a memoir in 2005 about his visits and conversations with Longo titled The True Story, Murder, Memoir, Mia Culpa. In 2015, the book was made into a movie called The True Story starring James Franco as Longo and Jonah Hill as Finkel. I know that not everyone will agree with my decision, but I hope it is a further step uh, towards finality in this conversation. Christian was on death row at the Oregon State Penitentiary for years until the state declared a moratorium on executions in 2011. He and 27 other death row inmates, including the Woodburn terrorists and Dayton serial killer Leroy Rogers, were transferred to the general population. This decision by Oregon Governor Kate Brown was condemned by Sister Mary Jane and others. Christian Longo, a K inmate number 14509855, remains in the Oregon State Penitentiary.